Inshallah, we'll continue from where we've been talking. Um, today will be very fast because there's a lot to cover, uh, including over the next few weeks, inshallah. Uh, you know, we've been kind of going slow. But, um, you know, again, these are the events that eventually led up uh, to a situation where you have the state, the so-called Islamic state, coming against the grandson of Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Imam Hussein al-Islam in the field of Karbala. You know, and how could this happen where you have a massive army coming against him? Uh, and again, this is the leader of the youth of Jannah. You know, this is the leader of the youth, one of the leaders of the youth of Jannah, and yet you have, you know, rulings uh, by these so-called Qadis and, and judges against him. Uh, and the whole state is coming against him. So question again is what led up to this situation? Last week we talked a little bit about the Khilafah of Uthman radiallahu as we said before, you know, during the Khilafah of Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu you still have hypocrites trying to infiltrate the state, but not able to. You know, so every time they tried to get a leg up, it'd be knocked down. During the Khilafah of Uthman radiallahu however, you have a situation, you know, where you have hypocrites infiltrating the state at high levels. You know, Marwan bin Hakam, as we mentioned, is one of the main ones uh, that did this, was able to do this. And once they get in, now they start bringing others in as well. So when Uthman Radio is martyred, you know, Ali Radio becomes the Khalifa. So Ali Radio, again, you know, they came to him and asked him to be the Khalifa. He said, no, choose amongst yourself and I will support whoever you choose. And they came back to him eventually and said, you know, there's nobody else who can deal with the situation. So he said, I'll agree to being the Khalifa if all of the Sahaba or the companions of Badr give allegiance to me. And they all agreed. So he sat on, sat on the member of Rasulullah in the Masjid of Rasulullah and they all gave him allegiance. And then after the companions of Badr, then everybody else came. Immediately you have people calling for the revenge for the mur of the murderers of Uthman, radiallahu Which Ali radiallahu says he can't do at this time because there's no peace in the, in, in the whole Muslim world. Yeah. And there's no, there's no eyewitnesses to the account who can, who can agree upon who did it. And so, after the allegiance was given, <coughs> Zubair bin Awam radiyan, as well as uh, Talha bin Ubaidullah. You know, Zubair radiyan, is one of the cousins of Ali radiyan. Talha is also one of the Ashim al-Bashar. Both of these are Ashim al-Bashar, right? the ten companions that were given the glad tidings of paradise in this world. These two, they gave allegiance to Ali radiyan, and then they leave Medina and they go to Makkah because the blessed wife or the beloved wife of Rasulullah so maybe Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu was in Makkah on Hajj. So they come to inform her of what's going on. Shortly after they arrive, Marwan also arrives. And Marwan brings news that, oh, Ali is refusing to take revenge for Uthman. Important point to understand here is this is not the age of telephones or Skype or anything. You can't simply call somebody and say, what's going on? No. No. It would take months for a letter to go from one place to another place. And sometimes one letter would be sent and the letter after it would come after, would come before the letter that was sent earlier. No. So, you know, it's not like immediate decisions can be made based on actual information. Even today, in the age of, of social media, 99% of what's put out there, you know, 
is either false or a twist on, on, on you know a twist of the truth. So it's not really true anyway. I mean, you look at the news today. It's not news. It's propaganda. This is modern day, modern times. Back then, it was easier for the hypocrites to spread the propaganda because, you know, you, again, you can't simply call somebody and confirm what's going on. So we, we have to keep that in mind when we're thinking about that time. You know, people say, well, why did he do this? Well, you know, he was acting, you know, whoever you're talking about was acting on information that he had received. Now, the question is, was that information accurate or not? It's a different issue. So Marwan brings this news that, oh, Ali is refusing to take revenge for, for Uthman. Mm -hmm. Which was not the case. Ali rather didn't say, I'm refusing to take revenge. He said, I have to find out who actually did it. And plus, there has to be peace in, you know, I have to, my first, first objective is to create peace within the empire. Because you have revolts coming up everywhere, in every city. One of the first things that Ali Radhan does is though he moves the capital of the Islamic State from Medina Munawwara to Kufa. And the reason he does this is because of all of the turmoil that's going on. And he doesn't want that there should be bloodshed, which there already was, but he doesn't want any further bloodshed and rioting and looting in the city of Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hmm? Because as we said before, last week, only 17 people could come and attend the funeral prayer of Uthman. Because the situation was so uh, rough that people were afraid to leave their homes. You know, they were afraid that they would be killed if they left their homes. So Ali moves the capital to Kufa. Again, he had let, sent all of these letters to all of the governors saying, take allegiance, I, am, I have been chosen as the Khalifa, now you need to take allegiance with me. Maliya, who was the governor of Sham, uh, and the cousin of Uthman, who after the same murderers had killed Uthman and cut the fingers of his wife off, they took those fingers and his shirt to, to Sham, and on the member uh, in the masjid of Sham, they, they swear uh, on the Quran and, and by Allah that this was the doing of Ali. So Mahavya Radhi of course refuses to give allegiance to Ali Radhi. When Aisha Siddiqa Radhi, when she hears the news that this is what's going on, and of course this was not news, this was propaganda, that Ali Radhi is refusing to take you know, revenge for Uthman. So they decide and they, they realize that Ali Radhi has gone to Kufa and from Kufa he's going to be going towards Sham to go deal with the situation there. So they come to Busra. They travel, Aisha Radion, along with various other people and companions, including Zubair bin Awam and Talha bin Ubaidullah. They go from there to Busra. And in Busra, you know, as we mentioned last week as well, you know, there are many people who are claiming to be the murderers, thousands of people claiming to be the murderers of Uthman even though everybody knows that there are only maybe at most a handful of people there. This creates a situation where now who do you take, you know, you can't kill someone for a crime he didn't commit. And of course this is death sentence situation. So even lawyers here, you know, they'll do this sometimes. Is you know, if it's, uh, they'll, they'll have somebody else confess to a crime that they didn't commit in order to cre uh, create reasonable doubt. So this is what these people are doing. Rasulullah had told sitting, one time he was sitting with his wives, and he said to them, he says, I don't know which one of you the dogs of Hawab will bark at when she will lead uh, a, a, an army. Rasulullah I'm saying I don't know is not like we say I don't know. If I say I don't know, it means I don't, you know, I have no context or no information. Rasulullah so I'm saying I don't know means that he, he knows but he can't confer that information to anybody. Because if it meant he didn't know, then at the same time later he's telling Ali, or then he says that there will be an issue between you and Aisha, treat her gently and return her to her place safely. And it's talking about the same thing. And so, 
eventually the army of Aisha Radiwana and uh, and the army of Ali Radiwana they meet. However, before that, on the way to this meeting point, there are dogs that start barking. And when the dogs start barking, Aisha Radiwana immediately remembers what Rasulullah had said. She has the army stop and she says, ask what place is this? Some people say that this is Hawab. And she says, let's leave. You know, this is not good. We need to leave, go back. Zubair and Talha radiallahu they say, look, we've come this far. Let's just go a little bit further and we'll meet and we'll figure out what's going on. Marwan bin Hakam pays some people to swear by Allah that this is not this place, that this is not Hawab, this is some other place. Again, you know, the hypocrites, uh, you know, yeah, playing their games. And so when they continue forward, the armies, when they arrive close to each other, it's late in the afternoon. So Talha and Zubair, Radion, they ride out, and on the other side, Ali Radion rides out along with Imam Hassan al -Islam. They meet, they talk on their horses, and the discussion basically is that we will meet tomorrow morning with the wife of uh, with of Rasulullah so and with Aisha Siddiqa Radion, the mother of the believers, mm -hmm. and we'll figure out what's going on. And they go back to their respective camps. That night, the hypocrites. They attack the camp of Aisha Siddiqa Radiyana, saying that, oh, Ali sent us. And they attack the camp of Ali Radiyana, saying, oh, Aisha sent us. Mm -hmm. and so, war breaks out. You know, battle starts in the middle of the night. You know, this is a time when you didn't have nighttime fighting. If you had a battle, normally, you would, they would the people would fight during the daytime. And when sunset came, you know, basically the battle was over for the day to be continued tomorrow. But here they attack in the middle of the night. It's called the Battle of the Camels. For various reasons. One is many camels were hamstrung, hamstrung during this battle. And the other main reason is that when, when the fighting starts, Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha, she gets out on her camel, and the women would travel in the haudaj, you know, a little tent that was made for them, so they would be, you know, no one could really see see them. You know. During the battle, the hypocrites realize whose camel this was, and so they attack. And when they go to attack the camel, Ali Radon sees what's going on, and he sends two of, sends two of his soldiers to defend her. You know, so if there was an issue, you know. If if there was animosity or an issue between them, why did he send his men to go and defend her? And when they come and defend her, shortly Ali Radhan rides up, the camel falls. One of the men that he sent was Muhammad bin Abu Bakr, who was fighting in the army of Ali Radhan. This is the son of Abu Bakr Radhan, the, the brother of Aisha Siddiqa Radhan. So he's fighting on, in the army of Ali. He's one of those who, he's, who Ali Radun sends. When the camel starts to fall, he puts his hand inside of the haudaj and catches her. She doesn't know whose hands these are. And she says that curse the hands who have touched the wife of Rasulullah. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, I'm your brother. And she says, well, the, 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 the supplication has already left. Mm -hmm. Ali Rana rides up and he says, are you hurt, my mother? Again, you know, understand the wording here. He asked her, he says, are you hurt, my mother? And she says, may Allah forgive you. You know, again, these are not the words of people who have animosity against each other. <clears throat> During the battle as well, Marwan bin Hakam, who again is allegedly on the other side, he shoots an arrow and kills Talha bin Ubaidullah radiallahu And says that I have, and after he kills him, he says, I have taken revenge for Uthman. 
Now this is the politics that these people play. Zubair radiallahu anh, again, he's on the other side. During the battle, he, he comes in front of Ali radiallahu anh. And Ali radiallahu anh, at that time reminds him of something Rasulullah has said. Again, these are cousins. You know, the, the mother of uh, uh, Zubair radiallahu anh, is the sister of Amir Hamza. She is the daughter of Abdul Muttalib. So they're cousins. So one day they were playing and Rasulullah he saw them playing and he said that today they play and one day they will fight. You know, they were they were playing, not playing as children, but they were they were young men and they're they are you know they're practicing their skills. And so Rasulullah says that today they are playing and one day they will fight and Ali will be on the truth. Again, the truth is with Ali and Ali is with the truth. And so when they meet, Ali rather reminds Zubair rather of that incident. And so Zubair rather asks Ali and he says, what should I do then? You know, again, if he's looking at him as an enemy, he would not be asking him, what do I do? You tell me what to do and I will do it. And so Ali rather he says, leave this place. Just get out of here. You know, with all this confusion, uh, things aren't going to get resolved like this. So he says, just get out of here for now. He leaves and some hypocrites see him leaving and they follow him. And when he's making salat in a valley that he had stopped at, uh, they martyr him in that condition. So after this battle, you know, Ali Radion he fulfills the command of Rasulullah who said, you know, when when this happens, then treat her gently and return her to her place safely. So he sends Muhammad bin Abu Bakr Radion along with uh, other soldier to get her back to Medina Munawwara safely. You know, and after this, she she vows not to get involved in in any of this politics, you know, just the situation that that's been created. One of the things that people had, you know, Rasulullah said that a believer is a mirror, mirror to another believer. So if I see issues within my brother, then perhaps these are reflections of issues within myself. You know, the mirror of Rasulullah is so clear that whoever looked upon him, you know, saw a true reflection. But the mirror of Rasulullah is tinted with rahmah, with mercy. He did not expose anybody. Ali is also a very clear mirror. You know, but when they saw, when people saw him, they ex exposed themselves. And this is why the Rasulullah said that only a believer will love you and only a hypocrite will have animosity against you to Ali. And so when the hypocrites looked at him, it exposed them and that simply increased their animosity against him. So again, this is the battle of the camel and this is what happened here. So this is one point to, to understand. The next thing is Ali Radan after this he continues on his way towards Sham. Yeah. And they arrive at a field called Sifin. And this will become later known as the Battle of Sifin. So because the army of Mabia Radan comes on the other side, Ali Radan comes from this side. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of things, a lot of details that I'm gonna just skip over because of, of time. Uh, and they're not directly pertinent to what I wanna the points that I want to make. The two armies stand against each other for almost a hundred days. So three plus months. No fighting. Ali Radha is, is intent on coming to some type of resolution. He keeps sending messengers and you know unfortunately the same response comes. You know, and that we, there will be no peace until we have gotten revenge for the blood of Uthman. 
And so, eventually, the fighting starts. There is a verse in Surah Hujrat, Surah number 49, which starts off, verse number 9, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off with, in in, wa in fatani. Rough translation, and because of time, you know, if two factions among the believers fight mm -hmm. with each other, then you should create peace and resolution amongst them. But if one of them can persist on oppression, then everybody should fight against that one until they come back to the truth. And in the end, Allah SWT says, you know, uh, that Allah SWT loves those who are just. This verse in the Quran could not be implemented during the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The application of this verse was impossible during the, during the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I'll get to why in a second. You know, a lot of people, when they hear that, they say, oh, you know, Quran is a book forever. You know. You know, so why can't it? Why why isn't every verse applicable forever? You know, because Quran is also a book of laws, and whenever you have a book of laws, you have when the pet law was passed, when the law becomes effective, and until when the law is effective. Certain laws are effective as soon as they are passed. Certain laws are passed, and then they are effective later, and then they are infinite time. There are laws that are effective now and then they become ineffective at a certain date. You know? And Allah Subhanahu talks about this in Surah Baqarah where he says that, you know, uh, in verse 106 where he says that, uh, you know, we, uh, about Mansukh and Nasikh and Mansukh where he says that we abrogate some verses from this but we replace it with something equal or better. You know, read the verses. Just like the verses as far as when, when alcohol became prohibited. And you have initial verse saying that, oh, you know, there is some good in it, but there's more bad in it. People understand, there are some companions who immediately understood and they gave up drinking even just with this verse. Then the verse came that, oh, if you're intoxicated, don't come close to the prayer, to Salat. Well, Muslims should always be ready for Salat. So some companions, they gave up drinking, but I can't take that verse now and say, oh, you know, I'll drink, but I just won't make Salat. So not applicable in that sense. The lessons we learn are, are, are always applicable, but the, but the application of the verse directly, no more. Because once the verse came that, you know, this is the, uh, uh, this is the, get, or the actions or the, or the game or the, of shaitan, you know, intoxicants, then forbidden completely. Don't even go close to it. Don't even go close to it. In Surah Nisa, Surah number four, Verse number 64 or 65. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, more or less, uh, he says to Rasulullah but know that I swear by your Lord, O my beloved, He's swearing by the Lord of Rasulullah. He's swearing by himself, but as the Lord of Muhammad. This is the love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for Rasulullah. That I swear by your Lord, that none of them believes until he accepts you as the final judge in all of their decisions. And not only as the final judge, but he loves whatever you, you decide for him. It's not only, okay, I accept the decision of Rasulullah Sussam, but not, you know, okay, I, I accept it, but I don't like it. No. You accept it and you love whatever he decides for you. He says, you're not a believer if you do not do this. So every issue that came up during the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu eventually would end up before Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if, if somebody didn't agree with his decision, he's no longer a believer. In the verse in Surah Hujrat, verse number 9, here you have two parties of believers. And even the one that is disputing the decision is still remaining a believer. So again, this verse could not be applicable during the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi because if anyone refused what he decided, he's no longer a believer. In this verse, even though, okay, you've had, you've had judgment passed, one group is not complying with the judgment, but they're still believers. 
And this is what the Battle of Safin shows us. You know, because there are groups that try to say that Mahdi is, is well, you know, he had left Islam, astaghfirullah, which is not true. If he had left Islam, Imam Hassan and Islam would not have handed over the, 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 the rule of, over the Muslims to him. And I will not say hand over the Khilafah because the Khilafah ended with Imam Hassan. Okay, so this, this battle starts in Safin. And it rages on for quite a while. You have thousands of people martyred on, on both sides. Ali, in the Battle of the Camel, he made Salatul Janazah not only for the people that, defend, that, that were martyred defending his side, but also the people that were fighting on the other side. In Safin, he does the same thing. The, eventually, it gets to the point where the forces of Ali are overwhelming the other side. And what the other side does is, at this point, they discuss among themselves, okay, you know, we know we're losing and we're gonna lose and tomorrow we'll, we will lose it, the battle completely if we don't do something desperate. Yeah. So now what they do is they take paper or parchments of the Quran and they put them on their spears and they come out marching and say, we will, we will, oh, oh, we will comply with whatever is decided by this, by the Quran. <clears throat> so there were many in the army of Ali who when they see this they lay down their weapons Ali Radun tells them and commands them do not lay your weapons down continue to fight this is a tactic of war and they say no we don't want to fight anymore you know we're gonna lay down our weapons this is important to understand because, or, or to remember because this will be how the Khawarij will end up coming. The same people who lay down their, their, their weapons during the middle of, the, of this battle will be the same people who later on will claim that Ali Radim is kafir for accepting arbitration. That's the fool. Right. Time's up. I thought I would get a little further than I did today. Uh, we'll continue from here next week, inshallah. Uh, but again, these are important things to understand. And the Khilaf of Ali Radun, which is, the, which is something that is not talked about much. You know, if you, you know, and the reason it's not talked about is because all people get confused. Well, if you, get, you get confused if you don't understand. You know, if you don't know, you have to know in order to try to understand. You know, and if, and, and if you know, Ali Radun again is the door to the city of knowledge. And if you don't understand his, why he did what he did, then how will you understand the knowledge? Uh, and these are important points, again, to understand because we're living through the same thing today. All the politics that's going on in the so-called Muslim world, you know, you have a lot of hip, well, the majority of hypocrites, you know, running things within the Muslim world, you know, posing as Muslims and doing everything they can to to harm the Muslims. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and allow us to understand and uh, you know fill our hearts with his true love and the true love of his beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his family, his companions and all of those whom they love inshallah. Those who have not made sunnah go and make sunnah inshallah.